Is asteroid mining finally possible in 2024, and who are the mysterious players spearheading this new industry? As it turns out, the holy grail of space exploration and the quadrillions it could earn, yes, quadrillions with a Q, may be closer to reality than ever before. And when you dig deeper into this field that may seem closer to science fiction than reality, you unearth some fascinating new technology, a juicy history of corporate drama, and bold promises that may yet define the future of our species among the stars. So let's dive into the current state of the asteroid mining industry. Who are the players involved? Why are countries and governments suddenly taking it seriously? And the mysterious figureheads behind the scenes pushing the next generation of space technology. But before we get into that, if you're hungry for keeping up with all the exciting developments in the new space economy, from where the money is flowing to the latest news, don't hesitate to subscribe to my free space industry newsletter, Launchpad, landing in your inbox once per week. Now, back to business. In space exploration, there's a term called in situ resource utilization, or ISRU for short. ISRU promises the next great leap into the solar system, leveraging the local materials of our resource-rich planetary neighbors to essentially create anything a mission, robot, or human may need to continue the exploration of space. Ice deposits on Mars for clean water, lunar oxygen and hydrogen for rocket fuel. There's no shortage of commodities in space, no different from Earth, that when refined through the right process or utilized in the right technology could make meaningful difference for the possibilities we can explore in space. But perhaps the most inspiring of them all is the safe and efficient mining of asteroids and other rocky bodies drifting in the void between planets. The premise is simple. A probe or probes is sent to an asteroid to extract materials from it or potentially bring the entire asteroid back into Earth orbit. The technology has been proven as far back as 2010 when the Japanese-made Hayabusa 2 returned 5 grams of asteroid sample to Earth after a 10 year long mission. Those were the first ever samples collected from an asteroid, and since then Japan has planned more missions, China's getting in on the fun too with their own sample return plans, and NASA has since returned over 120 grams from the metal rich asteroid Bennu. Last year, NASA also launched a probe to the asteroid Psyche, which is estimated to be valued somewhere between 10 and 700 quintillion dollars. These samples, while giving valuable insights into the origin of planets, and maybe even life itself, are a far cry from a thriving industry. All of them have taken years, delivering incredibly small samples for the purpose of science alone. Budget costs are high, technology difficult, and mission duration long. So why on earth would anyone want to commercialize this? As it turns out, the simple fact that it has been proven possible is enough for some bold companies to try. Asteroid mining has made large promises for decades, ever since the field was first conceived in the 1950s. Fresh resources unburdened by earthly geopolitics and pesky land laws, countless tons of raw materials ready to be fashioned into the stuff of science fiction, from gigantic space stations and lunar colonies to off-world industrial parks and machines. And of course, eye-watering quintillions with a Q worth of precious metals left over from the formation of our very solar system. People spend billions on space because they know it's one of the few places they can earn trillions back. Naturally, the field has spawned a large degree of hype. The potential to catapult humanity to untold levels of advancement and the business leaders behind it to untold levels of wealth is an attractive one. But the current state of the industry, and the sordid history that led us to this point, has unfortunately left much to be desired. The two foremost leaders in the field, Planetary Resources and Deep Space Industries, both sold out in 2019 to owners that have nothing to do with asteroid mining. Planetary Resources was purchased by an investment group called Consensus which describes itself as a blockchain venture production studio. The two asteroid mining companies, which once generated a lot of headlines for their goals, were founded in the early 2010s and were pretty much the only serious operators in the field for the entire decade. They promoted some promising resource extraction technology, but struggled to get their first probes built and sent due to the high cost of launches at the time. Keep in mind that this was before SpaceX alone, a single American company was launching one rocket every three days on average. The industry was slower then, and the recent cancellation of the American Shuttle program pretty much gutted the launch market. The bubble, if there ever was one in a field that was more research domain than actual industry, had popped. The usual suspects were blamed. Commodity markets were too volatile, the technology was too nationed, and operations too expensive. Go figure. But that was then, and this is now. How does asteroid mining hold up in 2024? In the age of rising metal values, Starship and other heavy lift rockets surging space accessibility, and advanced robotics significantly dropping manufacturing costs. Better than you might imagine, but still a far cry from the dreams of would-be space prospectors. 
The field is almost entirely composed of post-pandemic startups like the US-based Astroforge, Carmen Plus, and even China's Origin Space, all operating on the bold promise of asteroid resource extraction. Not as some tertiary goal, but as the founding purpose of their companies. Confidence is high, with fresh faces taking up the mantle of what could be humanity's most impactful industry, though there's no denying that the industry is still incredibly nascent and operating on decades-long horizons. Over that amount of time, anything could go wrong, and an industry led almost exclusively by fragile startups can be prone to heavy disruption, as the first generation of asteroid mining companies proved. And despite capitalizing off new tech and cheaper manufacturing, the second generation of companies has their own unique list of challenges. Metals may be valued high, but as a consequence, the materials needed to manufacture are too. You don't get one without the other. Launch costs may be coming down with entire fleets of gigantic reusable vehicles hitting the market at once, but the cost of capital has risen in turn, with interest rates high and venture capital funding drying up in the wake of recessionary fears. Not exactly a healthy combination for an industry built around lean-running startups. And traditionally, in a domain as high-risk, capital-intensive, and heavily regulated as aerospace, the billionaire-backed companies are the ones that typically survive the ups and downs of the industry, while the cash-strapped startups fight for survival. But who knows, hindsight may be 2020 and the future is still looking bright. SpaceX wasn't the first reusable rocket manufacturer, after all, which not only followed a long string of innovative companies in the 90s like Sea Launch, but also competed against several other promising companies in the 2000s like Scaled Composites and Kistler Aerospace. And though the journey was challenging, SpaceX ultimately survived and became the $150 billion behemoth that it is today. The first generation of launch companies failed, and it took fierce competition among the second, utilizing new technology to succeed. Asteroid mining may be no different, and it's generally a good sign when the US House of Representatives shows some interest, recently passing an asteroid mining bill that allows companies mineral rights to what they dig up. This may seem small, but it sets legal precedent for an industry that previously had none, which is a huge step forward, and the fact that these discussions are even reaching the highest levels of government at all should be taken as a sign of progress. So will asteroid mining finally be viable in 2024? Some founders think so. The technology certainly has improved, and the feasibility of sample returning missions has well been established. But only time will tell if the second generation of space companies can truly break ground. Thanks for watching, and if you're as excited about the new space economy and what it means for humanity as I am, please don't hesitate to subscribe, as it really helps me out. And if you'd like to follow me anywhere else, I drop links to my socials in the description below. Keep watch for the next video, and I'll see you soon.